almost every piece cracked from this mold and I really don't know what to do about making them work. I also oversaw a part of the design and don't think these pieces are functional anymore. I need your help. Hello, my name is Shelby and I'm a potter. I found this bulk lot of slip casting molds and one by one I'm pouring them up to reveal whatever is inside and then finish it into an artwork. This is the mystery mold series. So let's see what's in today's episode. What an intro to this week's mystery mold. I hope I have got you intrigued. I will say that this piece has so, so much potential, but I just need to figure out how to make it work properly. So I'm hoping you can help me with that in the comments, but let's open it up and see what's inside. Okay, it is time to open this huge one. It is so heavy. I think it might be a platter because of the three holes and usually they put a few holes to dispense the like flow of the clay. I'm actually gonna flip it over so the holes are on the bottom because I think that that's the base. Let's open it. just opened it and it's actually a set of three birds do you know like the ducks on a wall and they're like one big one medium one small and they're like flying I have always 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 wanted a set of those the only thing that could one up the ducks is a native Australian animal version of them and that's what I got it's a row of flying glass each one is a different size so it goes small medium to large I don't understand why this mold is so heavy in particular. I think it might just be the batch of plaster that they made it from. These molds, like if I could have gotten a mold, this would be it. I, I have always done Australian native animals and to have my own versions of the flying birds on a wall, but an Australian native bird who made this because I want to hug them. It makes me so, so happy. All the birds have this like indent for another wing to like come out so i'm gonna go have a look to see if i can find that wing i'm gonna assume that it's gonna be the same rectangular shape with three holes again this is gonna be really cool but let's go see if we can find the other mold all right so i just dug this one out and it actually has the lower on it it was actually upside down it had angel wings on it so i wasn't sure if it was it but when i flipped it over it does have the so let's just have yeah, that's definitely them. So let's go pull them up and attach them. They're perfect. So we have the wings here. Oh my gosh, that is gonna be so cool. I wonder if there's a way I could hang some like native dried flowers from these, like they're flying through the trees. Let's paint them up. So there you have it, a set of three flying galahs. And here is a look at the mold for anyone that's looking for it. It has no detail on it other than the galah that's carved out onto the piece. My first actual issue with this piece, which I mentioned is that it had a low cracking. Before you jump to conclusions, it's not because of this wing. The wing I attached actually ended up perfect. It's actually another issue that's causing the cracking. I am just gonna say that these are beautiful they are amazing but my gosh they tested my patients they tested my studio assistant's patients because she also helped me make some of these and help clean them up they were very fragile very fiddly very tricky to clean up and I also had no idea how these were actually meant to hang up and how they actually go on a hook I'm going to explain what I'm doing to paint these up in a minute but I just want to explain my thought process about the hanging up situation so if you saw on the back it had that little hole or like a little circle on the back so I cut that out thinking that that was meant to be how you hang it up and somehow that was gonna work or maybe something goes inside it but I should have thought more about it but the tricky thing is because these are so fragile trying to figure out how to hang them up was so hard like I was trying to clean them I was trying not to break wings I broke three I broke three of these just at Greenware stage 
trying to clean up their wings, trying to get rid of all the seams, making sure they're nice and smooth, but trying to actually navigate how they were gonna hang and what direction and what angle, I just was not sure. So I thought I would leave some of them a bit more hollow so that the hook could go inside the bird and also cut out that hole and figure it out once they were fired. I should not have done that. I should have just used one as a prototype and not attach the wing and figured out how to hang them. But instead, I just went all in and was like, let's make lots of these things and we'll figure it out once they're done. That was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. The other thing I thought about was maybe doing some canthal wire. So I used that heat resistant wire in a lot of my work of making a really thick hoop and maybe putting a couple of those on the back. But then I was like, how do I fire this? Is that going to make it fragile? If it's sitting on that wire, is that wire gonna bend and sort of like bow back into the piece? Like I just was a bit worried to do that. But I just kept coming back to that hole that's on the back. I just, I feel like there was something that you used to be able to stick in these molds to make that work. Maybe there is a type of hook that I'm not familiar with that you are that could kind of just like slot into that hole. Yeah, otherwise I think I kind of stuffed up by making all of these pieces and not thinking about how they were going to hang up because I don't know how to hang these up now and I'm worried that we can't use them anymore. I'm gonna talk about the design because that's not the only thing that happened. I mentioned that they all crack and yeah, we'll talk about it later. I'm a little bit sad about it. Let's talk about what I did with them design-wise. So I did three different designs. Two were to test which pink color would be the best. So the first design, what I did, I bisque fired all of them first because they were so fragile. I was not touching them with a brush without bisqueing them first. The first design I antiqued with brown and then I put underglaze over the top of the brown. So the antique brown was to give the texture of the feather details and for them to sort of be a bit more darker underneath that underglaze. The underglaze was then to be really washy and kind of like light coat so that it would look really painterly like. For this one I used a pink underglaze to get that body color. The risks with this design was that the pink might not be the right color and also that underglaze wash I've done might not show through enough and then the other issue is that the underglaze I may have applied it too thin by trying to get that feather detail to pop underneath with the brown so I'm not really sure I just have this visual of what I want them to look like and I'm just trying a bunch of ideas to try and get that. The next design I did Okay, hello. So the next design I did was I actually put the underglaze on first in the bold color and I only did it on the head, the wing tips and the tail end. I bisque fired that on. I antique washed it with the brown over the top of the underglaze and then I put a pink glaze over the pink body part. This pink glaze will hopefully be able to show a little bit of that brown underneath whilst also having the brown a little bit more prominent on the wings. And then I dipped the wings and everything into the clear glaze as well. It was a bit of a process for those two designs and both are just trying to make sure I get the right coloring, the, the, the proper coloring of a galah. The next design was a little bit of fun and a little bit of an experiment because a couple weeks ago I did a really cool vase and I wanted to use this matte glaze and I stuffed up and didn't think it through but I still really want to use this matte glaze so I decided I would do a set because there's three of them I'll do one bird in each of the matte glazes I am going to fire it hotter than the actual specified temperature of this glaze so I do know that it's going to turn a bit glossy and it's not going to work the way it's actually meant to work but I thought it would be so cool just to see them and I kind of imagine them like that really like bold 50s pastel-y color on the wall I think they'll be really fun to just do like a random color not necessarily a realistic bird as well so that was the process I packed them in the kiln and yeah my unpacking is going to show off what happened and how they cracked Okay, it's time to open the kiln. 
we've got the glass inside. I'm a bit nervous they haven't worked and look the way I want them to, but we'll open that together. Okay, that is interesting. Oh, that matte glaze has totally changed colour to what I thought. Oh, I like them, but I'm not sure if that's what I was expecting and I think I need time for them to like wear into my brain. They look good. I'm not sure if I love how neon-y that pink has come out. I feel like the underglaze did better than I thought. I thought that was going to be the one I didn't like. Oh my god. Oh no, <laughs> that one is so creepy, <laughs> it is so possessed, it's staring right into my soul, <laughs> that's so bad. Yeah, that one looks like it's under the influence. <laughs> oh no, I will say I, I think I like the underglaze one better, I thought that hot pink was going to come out way nicer than that and it just, it's not. It's not given what I wanted it to give. Yeah, some of the eyes are a bit weird. I do love the grey. That looks really nice. Oh, hang on. That's gorgeous. I love that. And the wing hasn't cracked. Oh, no, it has. Why is that cracked there? I don't know if you can see in there. It's cracked in between the head and the wing. That's a shame. Ah, oh, what a bum. All right, I'm now nervous that they've all cracked. Although maybe that was just unlucky because looking, looking from above, I think they are okay. I think that was just a random incident. No cracks. That pink against white is actually quite nice and it brings out the pink in the head feathers a bit more. It's not that bad. I feel like I just do like that pink underglaze a bit better, but that one's great, no cracks. That's good. Oh no, there is a crack. It's really hard to see, actually. There's just a tiny little crack in there. That's so annoying. Why? I wonder why that's happening. I think it might be a mold design, because as it like contracts, it sort of pulls in that area. That one hasn't cracked in that area. Or oh, has it? I might be lying to myself. Hasn't cracked in the wing joint either. That's pretty good. Oh, every one I pick up, I'm like, ooh. It's cracked again. I don't know, like in here. It's the same spot. Yeah, this is the issue with the mystery mold sometimes is that because I am trying to finish a few and trying to fill a kiln load and have some backups, I can't vet those issues, which means sometimes I get a few that don't quite work. I mean, it's so minuscule and the cracks don't necessarily impact the piece. It's just a bit annoying because it's not perfect and it does make it a little bit more fragile. Okay, no crack at the wing join. Let's flip it over and have a look. No crack in that one. Oh, what a shame about that cracking issue. All right, I'll take the other pink one out before I take out that other one. Nope, that one doesn't have a crack. And the wing join looks pretty good. That's great. I love that gray to pink colorway. It's really soft and delicate. I feel like this one's my favorite bird so far. <laughs> Yeah, wow, okay. So this was meant to be that matte glaze and because we went a bit hotter than the matte glaze temps, it has gone glossy. Mm, do I like it? Not sure. I think I need to see the whole set. <laughs> I don't know whether I like it. Look at that eye. <laughs> Oh my gosh. This had so much potential and here I am wrecking it like that. What have I done to you? I'm so sorry. <laughs> it is time to unveil the second shelf. I'm pretty sure it has that blue and green underneath. So we'll see what's happened to those. I'm gonna like lift this up and not look. Okay, I'm not looking, I'm not looking. Can you see what I can't see yet? All right, I'm squinting. You can see that there's a bird there and some ducks. All right, I'm pulling this shelf off and then I'm gonna have a look. What do you think? What do you think my reaction's gonna be before I react to it? Three, two, one. Oh, wow, okay. I love that color. That yellow is pretty cool too, but I love that blue. They still look a bit possessed, but not as possessed as the purple, maybe because it was a lot darker in comparison, so the contrast was a lot more prominent. These ones look nicer too. Maybe I've just gotten used to the look of them now and I'm like, ah, they look great. Ooh, I can see how that was going to have a matte look to it. Texture of that, but it does have a bit of a gloss to it. I really love how it's got that shimmer in between the wings. The eye is a little bit jarring. I feel like I should have glazed over that so you could just see that 
eye detail but it's sort of blended in a bit more but otherwise I really like that color that's nice I can see where the matte was coming into that oh I forgot to report on cracks that one has a tiny 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 little crack just here but not bad Alrighty, so we've got this yellowy one, which was meant to be, I think, like a mint green. And you know what? I can see what color that was going to be as a matte as well, but I also love that shimmer it's got in between the wings. That's quite nice. And as for cracks, ooh, no cracks on this one. Look at you go. There's a few that didn't fit in the kiln, so I'm going to have to fire the kiln again. Oh, no. And also a crack on the back there as well. No crack on that wing. Pretty impressed with that one. Yeah, what a bummer about all those cracks, though. So there we have it. It cracked between the wing and the head. I just don't know how it happened because they didn't warp at all when you pulled them out. I just feel like maybe when they're drying and getting fired, they kind of contract a little bit, and that's where they pull and crack in that seam. This piece is just so beautiful I want to do it justice and trying to edit this video has had me so like heartbroken that I couldn't do it justice I know that that sounds like I'm being really hard on myself but I think it's just because I really appreciate the design of this piece that I just want to bring it to life in the best way I can you know what I did the best I can and I love how these turned out I think the odds were not in my favor because of the cracking and also just not being familiar with how I could hang these up. So just there, I showed you that pink underglaze. Here's a comparison of that pink glaze with the pink underglaze. As you can see, the pink glaze is a lot more neon, a lot more brighter, whereas the pink underglaze is more reflective of what an actual galah looks like. I love the underglaze ones. They turned out incredible i'm so happy with those i do like the pink glaze ones they're just not as good as the pink underglaze ones in my opinion but depending on your color scheme i feel like they could work and seeing them against a plain nude background makes them look a lot less neon than what they did in the kiln as to the matte glazes they turned out interesting they're kind of cool. They're kind of groovy. I think they're a lot of fun. If I were to buy this piece, I'd definitely opt for the realistic looking bird. Some of the eyes were a little bit creepy, but I know how to fix that in future. I just sort of made them a bit too cartoony, but I think they still work. They still work. Despite the issues I had this week, this piece is so timeless in my opinion. And it's one of the rare pieces that I would actually go out of my way to make myself a set and own and hang up in my house, in my studio. They just look stunning. Here I have them hanging up on my cork board I did a little hack that you'll see at the end with the behind the scenes on how I got those to actually hang up but I'd love to know your opinions on these and I'm not sure how to make them functional so please let me know in the comments if you've got some ideas on how we can actually make these hang so I can actually share them with you otherwise thank you so much for watching here is your sneak peek for the next reveal and some behind the scenes of me getting these to hang up and some bloopers too I am oh no one's gonna know Will it work? I don't know, but we're gonna give it a go. These birds might actually take flight today. Okay, 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 <laughs> I'm scared. Okay, just go for it and then if it falls, it falls. If you go down here, you can be the lowest. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Oh no, I don't have strong tape. What if I blue tack it? No, blue tack's not that strong, is it? Oh. It's holding up because I'm a bit scared. Blue tack, you better not let me down. Oh, stop, don't move. Oh no, I did the same thing again. I put the medium up in the wrong spot. You need to move. Alright, 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 alright. <gasps> Stop. If the blue tack can pull off the paint in my house, it can surely hold up these birds. I kind of want to position that there, so I might. Gosh, I should have done this first. Pop you there. Oh, lovely. That's lovely, isn't it? Just pop you there. Pop you there. Oh, lovely. Oh, stop, that's it. That fills up that gap nicely. No, I think that's it.